Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to thank you this conference, uh, this forum organizer of Fukuoka One Health International Forum. My name is Koya Ariyoshi. I am a professor of clinical medicine working at Institute of Tropical Medicine, Nagasaki University. Uh, I, I have, for the last 15 years since I joined uh, Nagasaki University, I have been involved in uh, training and education for people who want to work for global health. And as you know, uh, tropical medicine global health has a lot to overlap with uh, one health and also planetary health. Therefore, I titled uh, like this a newly emerging education training program for global health, uh, one health and planet health in Nagasaki University. Uh, I primarily uh, belonging to uh, Institute of Tropical Medicine, NECCAM, but I am a professor of clinical medicine, therefore I have a clinical department in the university hospital, uh, department of infectious diseases, where uh, young uh, clinicians are gathering from all over Japan who, is, who are wanting to work not only in Japan, but also in abroad as clinicians. In addition, uh, about five years ago, we established the so-called School of Tropical Medicine and Global Health, this is the first ever postgraduate uh, uh, schools in Japan, specifically uh, working on tropical medicine and global health, which was uh, 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 quite, uh, we got uh, great support from uh, our overseas counterpart, uh, London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine. So today, this is the content of today's my talk. Initially, I talk about uh, our new emerging education and training programs in Nagasaki. Uh, and then <laughs> I'd like to briefly touch on what we uh, teach and what the students learn in tropical medicine global health. And lastly, I would like to discuss how Japan can play more role in global health. Now, <clears throat> this is a uh, very important background I need to talk about our new emerging uh, education program and our special uh, partners, uh, London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine. This is a Senate House of University of London. So London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine, LSHTM, is uh, uh, just in front of uh, Senate House and behind the British uh, uh, Museum. And it's named the Tropical Medicine, but more importantly, it's named Hygiene Before Tropical Medicine. Uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, this, uh, people may not know, this uh, school is the, the top school for public health and not only uh, top comments. But the why uh, these two are together and which is highlighted, perhaps is illustrated by this, uh, the pump, the famous pump uh, uh, of which uh, the handle was uh, removed by uh, uh, Dr. John Snow, about uh, uh, 1800, and in order to control a uh, cholera outbreak in London, and therefore tropical medicine and public health are very closely linked. Uh, I have a very unique background. I spent quite many years, on and off, 10 years in UK academia, and this is the, my colleague. I spent six years working in West Africa, UK Medical Research Council Laboratory. And, uh, and <clears throat> I was only one Japanese working there. And I noticed that I always felt uh, Japan's appearance is very uh, uh, small uh, from global point of view. And, but I thought Japan has a lot of potential and Japan can play more role in global health. If we work more closely, together with their international counterparts. And then I said that one to my uh, colleagues, and they uh, shared my view. They thought maybe uh, Japan can play more role. And, and then particularly the <coughs> current head director of London School of Hygiene, Tropical Medicine, Professor Peter Piot, Baron Peter Piot. Um, he was, he is a former, uh, the first director of UNAs, and he's one of the uh, first discover, discoverer of Ebola viruses. And he agreed with us, our idea, and then he invited us to open 
uh, Nagasaki University Marketplace in uh, 2014, where he declared uh, this uh, uh, is not just an individual collaboration uh, between the scientists, but this is institutional uh, uh, partnership, so-called strategic partnership. And because of that, uh, we are given a lot of uh, support from them. For, for instance, four things is that we now can use their teaching education material, particularly their highly reputed epidemiology statistics uh, modules. And so that we can use almost uh, for free <coughs> the teaching material like that. And we uh, co uh, advertise the uh, a post, uh, professor's post, which are seconded uh, to uh, Nagasaki University. Now we have uh, two professors, one uh, professor of epidemiology, Professor Sharon Cox, and the other one, professor of uh, uh, trop clinical tropical medicine. Initially, cl Professor Chris Parry was here, and then now uh, succeeded by uh, Professor Chris Smith. In addition, we have uh, several teaching staffs uh, uh, cross appointed. And because of that, the Japanese government are convinced that they can provide special uh, financial support. And then well, we are lucky that we built a new uh, global health uh, research buildings in 2015. So now, then we established a new school of tropical medicine, global health. And we started uh, three master course. Uh, one is clinical tropical medicine course. The other one is public health course. The, the last one is the, uh, the Master of Science for Global Health Innovation. And in addition, in 2018, we now have a, a very uh, interesting, exciting uh, PhD program, so-called Joint PhD Program for Global Health. This is the joint, therefore, London School, Nagasaki University, uh, both academia jointly supervise PhD, we proposed a PhD, potential PhD project. If you go to uh, this uh, homepage and you click here, that there is a range of uh, potential uh, collaborative projects around here. Usually there are about 25, uh, 30 uh, propo uh, projects are being proposed and uh, students and any prospective student in the world uh, apply. Uh, very competitive. Each year we have about uh, 30, more or less 30 applications. Uh, we have a, a joint selection committee and very strictly select the best combinations of students and supervisory committees. And then in the end, the student will be granted uh, this <coughs> uh, joint degree written in both Japanese and English with a uh, logo from both university. And then the student uh, uh, academic uh, progressions is being closely supervised and monitored by this joint academic committee. And this process was again appreciated by the Ministry of Education, the Japanese government, and, and then we all provided another uh, special uh, financial support called WISE uh, uh, grant uh, this stand for World Innovative Smart Education Program. And therefore now the, the student, uh, each year we uh, select five joint PhD students and these five joint PhD students, uh, we provide, uh, we can provide uh, stipends and also as well as research grants. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, strategic partnership gave more uh, 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 opportunities not only for education but also research and because London School has a very uh, rich and uh, uh, human uh, research network in African continent whereas Japan had uh, a very strong uh, 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 research and network within uh, Southeast Asia and then uh, by Having the, through this partnership, uh, this is one example. Uh, we have a very nice uh, research stations in Vietnam, and the by collaborating uh, with, with uh, having some tech, 
technical support from London School Academia, we were succeeded to get much, much million uh, grant from Bill Gates Foundation, so which is 10 plus 5 million US dollars foundation, uh, fund uh, by uh, Bill Gates Foundations to conduct phase three uh, pneumococcal uh, vaccine trial in, in, in Vietnam. And in order to demonstrate, they even reducing current the standard dose of three doses of vaccinations to two doses or one dose, we could almost achieve the almost equivalent uh, hard immunity. That is our uh, goal. So uh, I have just talked about the our newly uh, <coughs> emerging uh, education uh, training program in Nagasaki University. Um, and then uh, in, in my second talk, I'd like to touch on what to learn in tropical medicine and global health, especially by uh, introducing our currently uh, developing new course called DTMH. DTMH stands for uh, Diploma of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. And UK, and as you know, because of the history, they have a quite long over 100 years of history for training doctors who are working in their former colonies. And they are looking after not only for expatriates who are uh, immigrated to the colony, but also their local people. And the, it's very popular, and uh, not only DGMH, not only run by London School of Hygiene, but also Liverpool University. And they also have a school of tropical medicine. They, they have uh, some equivalent to DTMH. In addition, in London, about uh, uh, six years ago, they uh, started to run this DTMH in uh, Africa. So on site, the, the students can learn tropical medicines uh, directly by patients on site. Now, similar to that, <laughs> Uh, collaborating with us, or we collaborate with London. So we now started uh, Southeast Asia Professional DTMH, and which is now accredited by uh, US, uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the society. Now in tropical medicines, uh, diversity is very uh, important. In Africa, uh, they have a, they are, on special health issue. And also uh, there are quite a number of infectious diseases which are only present in Africa. Just likewise in Southeast Asia, uh, we have our own uh, research topic and research uh, issues and public health issues. And also but several diseases which are unique, um, uh, uniquely uh, problems in Southeast Asia, such as like uh, in, in North Vietnam, in Hanoi, uh, the doctors working there, they quite often see scrub typhus, a rickettsia diseases, which are, may present in Africa, but people have not really recognized the problems. And in Manila, uh, for instance, after the floods, they have a lot of leptospirosis, uh, but in Africa, we don't know how much leptospirosis. There, there must be, but the, this is, not becoming a big problem yet, something like that. In addition, through this uh, uh, Southeast Asian DTMH, we also linked to London's and their hospital uh, for tropical diseases. And also we linked to uh, a national uh, center for uh, global health and medicines, uh, NCGM. In Tokyo, they have a special uh, ward for imported infectious diseases so that we can learn largely uh, the diseases which are circulating uh, uh, in, in Japan and not only in Japan, but also in UK. Now I would like to touch on the, our new development in Manila. Uh, this is a Philippine National Infectious Hospital called San Lazaro Hospital, <coughs> where we have about five years, uh, 2015, just over five years ago, we established a new uh, research uh, stations there. And this is the list of the uh, infectious diseases they are looking, they are <coughs> uh, admitting uh, per year. The, as you see that the 
you know, for dengue fever alone, they have nearly 5,000 admissions of dengue fever. A tetanus 200. Uh, in whole Japan, there are about five, 100 of tetanus cases being reported. So you can see how, uh, you know, how much, uh, how profound experiences these doctors working in San Lazaro Hospital have it. And then I personally believe that uh, none of these disease, uh, 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 any of these disease, there is always some potential. Somewhere in Japan, we may see these diseases in this globalized era. So the, for the next generation of Japanese medical personnel, they also should be prepared to see uh, any times, <coughs> any day in Japan, anywhere, we may encounter these disease. One good example is 2014 uh, dengue outbreak in Yoyogi Park in Tokyo. And therefore, you know, I, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for Japanese young uh, generations of uh, clinicians or medical personnel uh, to learn about uh, these diseases in the Philippines. Therefore, DTMH, in the last two weeks, uh, we provide the students to do some bedside teaching and also the, the student go to the later island where uh, Japanese uh, cystosomiasis are quite endemic and so that they will know how the, these parasites are transmitting uh, uh, in, in that environment. And these pictures were not taken uh, last year, this was taken from the year before the last 2019, before the COVID outbreak happens. And uh, so this is what happened. And also tropical uh, medicines, uh, the what kind of disease, what sort of issues we need to learn about tropical medicines. Uh, you know, the key word is animal because many tropical infectious diseases and also emerging infectious diseases, they are zoonosis. So that the, the student have to learn about which animal uh, what kind of animal, how they transmit the pathogen to humans. And also uh, quite a lot of tropical infectious diseases, uh, they are transmitted by the vector animal and arthropod. So, uh, you know, the, the students have to learn about the tick and mites and mosquitoes, sandflies and other insects and how it transmits, which uh, pathogen transmits to what. And also these uh, vectors are, are, are quite often influenced by uh, uh, the em environmental factors and therefore the student have to know in which environment, which kind, what kind of uh, 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 vectors uh, around and therefore what kind of disease uh, prevalence. Now this is a picture that the, where I spend substantial time either as a clinicians or as a researchers collaborating with the local clinicians. And, uh, and in my, almost in my entire career, so over 30 years, I started to work in Africa, then UK and Japan and, and Asia. Um, then uh, each time I met a friend with the local uh, clinicians and having discussions. Then uh, recently, I feel uh, the the world are changing for the last thirty years quite dramatically, in a way that the world population is now changing. A the entire the, the population of the entire world is now exponentially increasing, uh, just before and after two thousands. And uh, especially, you know, it's a huge increase in Asia. Now Asian populations are becoming older and older that I really started to notice, I have already noticed. And then the, the population in Africa is, is now really exploring. And as a result, what happening is that in many places in, so in the past, we thought this is the country of, you know, the rural area. Now it's big cities, mega cities around in developing countries, in many developing countries. And then now it's, you know, even in Kenya, for instance, 50, over 50% 50 of the entire 
uh, populations you know, living in Nairobi. And where they are living, and they are living in slum area, in very poor uh, environments in, 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 in the big cities, congested. Congested means human-to-human uh, -human contact now is exponentially, therefore, increased. Um, and then um, as a consequence, what happening is, as you know, the, the environment in, in the whole world or the planet environment, uh, they are now in favor and very favorable for any disease started and it's, it supports its spread up. So, uh, you know, that's why it's not very surprising now COVID outbreak is everywhere in the world. And, uh, and not only COVID before that, I think we have had the SARS and MERS and, and then 2014 in Tokyo, the dengue outbreak and 2014 again in West Africa, ever outbreak. They all are actually, and, and the recently we now see uh, yellow fever outbreak in many big cities in Africa, they all, you know, uh, is a sign, a reflection of uh, uh, this planetary environment are now rapidly changing in favor for infectious disease outbreak. In addition, as you know, the air network has, uh, you know, uh, radically uh, uh, developed Therefore, I think the whole world are now physically linked, although uh, COVID outbreak now stopped us to develop this air network even further. But having said that, just uh, stopping the uh, enhancing, the strengthening the quarantine, it should not be perfect at all uh, to stop the virus coming into Japan. Uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, I think we are walk, We are now living in one world. Therefore, I think my very important message is no area in the world should not be uh, left as a black box in terms of infectious diseases. Therefore, I think uh, it's very important. Uh, as a scientist, uh, as an infectious disease expert, we should pay equal attention to what's happening in outside Japan, wherever in the world, and that is the best way uh, of uh, protecting Japan, our country, our people from infectious diseases. So once we look at the issues in, in, in global wise, uh, global health issues are huge, a lot compared with solutions we have. So what kind of skills uh, we need in order to solve these problems. I think one obvious issue, uh, I think in my uh, view, the, uh, we, we need to have a skills, understand these issues uh, globally and multidisciplinary aspect, not just only for uh, viruses or pathogens, but also many other uh, aspects. And also, uh, I think we, we have to create innovations solutions. For Nagasaki University, uh, in uh, quite lucky situations in terms of infectious disease research and training, A, because we have a neck in tropical medicines, B, uh, because uh, we have a, a very uh, <coughs> a big graduate school of uh, medical sciences, where we have a lot of uh, experts working on, infect on infectious diseases. In addition to that, we recently uh, expanded collaborations always cross uh, ministry collaborations. So we're collaborating with Ministry of Health and uh, especially NCGM uh, is now is a, our partners uh, for TMGH. Now we have a TMGH uh, satellite campus in Tokyo, India. Uh, Plus, we have uh, collaborations with private sectors, global companies such as like Sys, uh, Shionogi and Sysmex. In addition, recently now, we are planning to open, establish a uh, new uh, BSL4 facility uh, in Japan. Now, uh, global health, 
uh, our goal is to uh, achieve uh, health equity. Health equity, that means the wherever you go, uh, no one is left behind in terms of their you know, health. I think they should, they should actually enjoy uh, the fair health status. And how we can achieve it? I think uh, what we really need is that we need to uh, cross border uh, work and not just only working on uh, clinical medicines or veterinary medicines. And we should collaborate with economists or uh, the experts in education, politicians, engineering, love science, environment. That's quite important. And I learned this one from uh, my experiences working in Western Africa, especially, you know, uh, the, the Professor Brian Green, uh, who I really grossly uh, respect him, that he, is, he has done a lot of work in malaria, um, and not just only the malaria parasites, and, but also, you know, mosqu mosquito, how mosquito transmits and what kind of mosquito, how we can control, not only uh, looking, uh, working on patients and developing a new, uh, drug trials, um, and not, not only that, but going into the community to find out how people can be protected from malaria transmissions, such as like a bed net, how we can treat this bed net and so on. And as a consequence, what happens is malaria, all malaria deaths is now almost zero in Gambia. Malaria is now being eliminated in Gambia. In addition to that, um, not only malaria, and the second most important is pneumonia, and the third most important is meningococcal meningitis. And then uh, he, he, he really uh, made contributions to uh, uh, eliminating meningococcal meningitis from whole West Africa, that kind of thing, not just only working on pathogens, but you know, he's really you know, reaching to the goal of uh, you know, eliminating uh, diseases and reducing the people's mortality. How can, why and how he could do it? Yeah, because he had such multidisciplinary skills. So that's what I believe. We created the site uh, we, for the last two years. Um, we had regularly having a joint symposium with the London School experts. So you can see how diverse um, background uh, our collaborations, our partnership have, and you get if you go to this URL site, you can you can watch, you can you can listen to yeah, lectures. So please come. In addition, so recently we are now trying to develop a new PhD course we call DRPH, Traditional Conventional PH, PhD. Uh, they do mainly research. Their goal is to produce evidence, and that's it. And then maybe evidence might be reflected on policies. Someone may use that evidence for uh, practice. But DLPH, uh, the uh, focus and the prioritize more about the use of uh, evidence and, and then plan how that can be integrated into the policy or it's, it's now implemented as a practice. So that's DLPH. This, New PhD, uh, DL PhD course is now being prepared in TMG Engineering Technical University. So today, I talked about uh, our uh, newly developing uh, education training program at Nagasaki University, especially you know, in collaboration with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicines. And we touched on what we learned uh, in tropical medicines. There are a lot to overlap with uh, one health and planet, planetary health, and uh, how we can then, Japan can play more role in global health, what sort of human resources we need and uh, the skills we need to develop. And then, uh, but finally, I, I think how we can, uh, uh, you know, develop such human resources with those skills and who can work uh, as a team, as a member of one global team, without borders, without institutions, without uh, disciplinaries, without sectors. I think the only the way we can do is such human resources for global health. 
should be cultivated by one team. So not just only one professor uh, teach that one, not only one university teach that, not only one sector to teach that. I think the, the whole, you know, the whole the world uh, should uh, train together, engage together to make such personnel. So human resources for global health should be cultivated by one team, we should work as one team. Thank you very much for your listening.